It's Heal Heat time. Hi everybody, welcome to Heal Heat. This is our TNA show for the week. My name is George Coles and let's jump right into the fire. First off, we're going to do the so-so segment for the night. Basically the stuff that was not good, not bad, just kind of there filling time. First up, the first match of the night. Eric Young versus Abyss in the Monsters Ball match. Finally, the payoff on the two-year run of Abyss slash Joseph Park, he unmasks him at the end, looks at a shard of a mirror to see that he is Joseph Park and he is Abyss. I'm happy that it paid off finally. Uh, I think it went about a year and a half too long with this angle. Uh, it drug and drug and drug and that's kind of why it's in here. I, by the point they got to this, I don't care. The match itself wasn't that great. Uh, I hate to say it because Abyss I think is one of the guys that's really been a highlight of TNA through their whole existence. He's kind of losing a step here and there and it goes with the style of wrestling he does. Guys that do this deathmatch style they don't have a long shelf life. If you look at a guy, one of the most famous guys, Mick Foley, he really only had about a 15, 16 year career. I know that sounds like a lot, and it is really, but for a guy on top, look at a guy like Sting who's been on wrestling for 30 years, Ric Flair for 40, um, Hulk Hogan even for the better part of 30 years, Shawn Michaels for the better part of 30 years. I mean, when you start to put it into perspective, a lot of the guys that wrestle this, these deathmatch styles, by the time they get into nine, ten years in, their bodies are so tore up and broken down that they're not half the wrestler they once were. I thought the time he took off to be Joseph Park and wrestle a lighter style of matches would have helped with that, but he's still lumbering a bit. Don't want to knock the guy too much. I'm sure he's given his best effort, but to me, it's just not, he's not the abyss he used to be. And he does pick up the win after the you know, going crazy on Eric Young. We'll see where it goes with this. Maybe we'll get a hybrid version of Abyss without a mask or, you know, Joseph Park with a mask. Who knows? But I'm glad to see they're finally getting to the payoff for the angle. Speaking of angle, the other one, the other, another so-so match that's kind of surprising, Kurt Angle versus Magnus. I understand why they did it the way they did with Ethan Carter III coming down and interfering and costing Angle or costing Magnus the match, but attacking Angle. They're trying to pull Angle off of the main event pitcher, put him in a feud with Ethan Ethan Carter, while Joe goes for the main event pitcher. Makes sense wrestling wise. I just when you get a match like the world champion Magnus versus one of the great wrestlers of the last 15, 20 years, Kurt Angle. I kind of want to see something better out of that. Just my opinion. Now, coming off of that, we had a couple different segments here and there during the night with Dixie Carter and MVP. The reason I'm putting them in the so-so department is MVP is such a great talker that it's showing how bad... Dixie Carter really is. I mean, this guy, I'm pretty sure he could hang with anybody on the mic in the world, whether it be Roddy Piper or CM Punk, anybody that you think of as a great talker, I think MVP can hang right along with. And unfortunately, Dixie Carter can't roll with the punches as well as MVP does. MVP will switch up and go with the crowd and kind of play off of what he's doing in the ring, where Dixie's a little bit more rigid and firm and uh, comes off a little bit, you know, like the lesser partner in the one-on-one -on -one reactions, which is kind of why I put it down here in the so-so area. It, 
like I said, it showed the difference between how good of a talker MVP is and how bad of a talker Dixie Carter is. Now, coming off of that, we're going to go to our question of the week from last week. Now, the question was, do you own any TNA merchandise? Unfortunately, we didn't get any answers from you guys. Um, I'm going to take that as maybe you do, maybe you don't. I personally have a couple DVDs, uh, more shirts, a couple of their action figures that I got in bundle sets, which if you go on their website, they have a grab bag bundle where you get so many DVDs, so many t-shirts, and an action figure for like 25 bucks. So I got that a couple times. I have a Rob Terry action figure and a Kevin Nash action figure. Two guys I probably wouldn't have bought one on my own, but cool, I guess. Um, the shirts that you get out of them I thought were really cool. I got a Bully Ray shirt out of it, a TNA Impact shirt that I think is really awesome, actually. A uh, white Kurt Angle shirt. So you get some cool stuff out of there. I like a little bit of their shirts. The, uh, the reason I said this is because I have a couple complaints with the TNA merchandise. Their DVDs are not quite, how can I say this, when they do like a compilation, it's not nowhere near on the par of WWE, and I know, don't get me wrong, they're not WWE, but even Ring of Honor does a little bit better with their compilations and what they do in TNA, they just come off fall a little flat and amateurish to my, in my opinion. Um, Another thing, a lot of their merchandise looks the same. Go on their website if you don't believe me. Look up the t-shirts and you'll see kind of a, if you look away from the screen a bit to where you can't see the names, you'll see there is kind of a generic style that runs through a lot of them. And you can't differentiate different between a Jeff Hardy shirt or a James Storm or a Mr. Anderson. Three big marketable guys that have three that should have three totally separate styles but don't because I'm guessing the same person's designing their shirts just say this little little pet peeve that I have that they should have more different styles also their shop their online store is a little bit hard to navigate and also it's weird because you go to some place like I hate to keep comparing it but you go to some place like Ring of Honor or WWE's online store and you can pick and see what the newest products are where TNA doesn't really give you that option. And a lot of times, more often than not, you go on there and like now, a lot of their highlighted stuff on their front page when you look for t-shirts or whatever are guys that aren't there. Sting, AJ Styles, Hulk Hogan. I mean, if I'm a TNA fan and I'm a new TNA fan, I'm not looking for them guys. I'm not even thinking about them being there. I'm wanting to get a James Storm with some Ojo, Gunner, Bully Ray, Austin Aries. You know, just my opinion. They could do a little bit better with the way they market and merchandise their product. And basically that's why I got into that question of the week. Coming off of that, our question of the week for next week. Who's been, out of all the TNA knockouts in their history, who has been your favorite? Let us know what you think. Hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on Twitter. Put it down where? Down there in the comments. Now on to the good portion of the show. Now, much like I said with the Dixie Carter MVP interaction, being so-so, the MVP Rockstar Spud interaction was actually a lot better. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I seen a guy like Rockstar Spud who has been given a ball, he's been given an opportunity, and he is making it work to the hundred to a hundred percent. Spud is doing absolutely awesome in his role. Him working with a guy like MVP is only going to be better and bigger for his career. Now coming off of that, we have the the I guess you could say it was a match, but not really. Curry Man versus against Bully Ray. Curry Man being Christopher Daniels, obviously. Sorry if I broke anybody's kayfabe there. I like that they use guys like Christopher Daniels where they can double tap him and have him do something like a segment like this and feed him to Bully Ray. It's basically a setup for Bully Ray 
and Kenny Anderson's casket match, which I don't know if it's next week or the week after. But you can see Bully Ray holds him up for the pile driver and yells out Ken Anderson's name before doing it and stuffing him into the casket. Like I've said on a few prior episodes, I'm really liking the dark side of Bully Ray and what they're doing with the character. I think it's a great progression coming off of the Aces and Eights Bully Ray. I think it's going to propel him back into the main event picture at some point. Speaking of guys that have been in the main event, we have your X Division Champion, Austin Aries, come out cutting a promo. And surprise, surprise, Ima Ion tried to catch, catch in his X Division briefcase. The two put on an absolutely good match. I enjoyed everything about it. I like Zima Ion. I like his character progression since he's been with the Bromans and become DJ Zima Ion. I think it's fit more into his personal personality. I think working him and Austin Aries put on a great match. I'd like to see more of this. I'd like to see a feud possibly with the two. I think they could absolutely tear the house down given the right opportunities. I thought it was one of the better matches of the night. Aries picking up the win. I enjoyed it. I mean, I know there are some people out there that aren't Zima Ion fans. I enjoy the character he's portraying. He's kind of Rick Martell mixed with a club kid, if you get what I'm saying. I mean, I, I, thoroughly, I think it's good, I think it's cool, I think it's more fitting to his personal personality. Now, speaking of, like I did a little bit ago with the, the uh, evilness of Bully Ray, we have the creepiness of Samuel Shaw. They show a recap of last week's incident with Chrissy Hemi. Chrissy talks about it, which I thought was kind of weird, because I kind of thought... That was one of the things, okay, us wrestling fans see, but the wrestlers don't, you know what I mean? Kind of like they've done in the past where the fans have seen something and the wrestlers don't address it. It was weird that Chrissy addressed what they seen and kind of was creeped out by it, which is good. I'm glad that's where they're going with this. I think Samuel Shaw is going to be an absolute star coming out of this. He's playing this role absolutely perfectly, in my opinion. And I think it's adding something. It's a different character than we've really seen in the past in wrestling. It's, to me, it's riveting what he's doing. And I think he's going to go far with it. Speaking of going far, two guys that have made it to the top of the mountain and are fighting for the number one contendership, Robert Roode versus Samoa Joe. What a good match this was. What a way to show off what TNA is about. Two of the best TNA wrestlers in their history. Two guys that are still bankable and marketable for the future of TNA. I really enjoy the fact that they're going back to pushing Samoa Joe, one of my personal favorite wrestlers in the world right now, and has been for quite a while. I like what they're doing with this. I like that Joe picks up a solid win. I want to see Samoa Joe versus Magnus. The story writes itself. Former tag team champions, former partners in the main event mafia, former friends, now enemies. It's as simple as the history of wrestling. The story's been going back since they've been doing scripted wrestling. Friends become enemies. It's been there forever. Now, coming off of that, we're going to go right into our ratings. Now, if you've seen the show in the past, we have a 1 to 5 scale. 1 being the worst, 5 being the best. 1's a Jesse Goddard, 2's a Garrett Bischoff, 3's a James Storm, 4's a Christopher Daniels, 5's a Robert Roode. You know, I'm kind of on the fence. I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to give it a Robert Roode just for the fact that there's nothing that I rated in the bad section of the night. The stuff that was in the so so section, I can live with being in the so so section. Um, Angle vs. Magnus, storyline wise, I can live with it being what it was. Eric Young vs. Abyss, I can live with it because it's going to end the Joseph Park character, hopefully. But basically, you know, the whole show was good altogether. The thing I worry about with TNA is they have good shows, they have great shows, but then they'll throw in two clunkers in a row. Or they'll throw in two good and great shows followed by an absolutely abysmal show. It's not that they don't have great shows, it's that they don't have consistently great shows, and that's what they need to do. 
and that's where we need to build. I kind of like what they're doing with the roster. I wish they would have somebody back like AJ Styles. Uh, I think Jeff Hardy coming back is going to add some more of that star factor. As much as I'm not really a fan of Hardy, he does bring eyes to the product. But basically, that's all I have to say about this. My name is George Coles, and this has been another episode of Heel Heat.